So once again, welcome everyone to today's session. So out of the five vital substances of TCM, we have completed the three substances. The one, first one is the key, second is essence, third is blood. So today we will start with the fourth vital substance, which is body fluids. If we have to understand the body fluids, it is like a multi-step purification process. Okay. If any of you ha who have learned about uh, petroleum processing okay, or how the raw uh, crude oil is purified and different types of fluids are obtained from the process. First, the say, crude oil is there and the, with the first level of processing or purification, say we get the uh, gasoline or the petrol. And in the second level, say we may get diesel. And in the third level of further purification, we may get kerosene. And in further level of purification, say we get uh, tar or the final uh, you know, substance which remains is a tar and that uh, before that we get say petroleum jelly. So in this way, all of these things are obtained from the same raw material, okay. uh, the crude oil, okay, which is uh, you know, got from the earth. And when it is processed at each step, different uh, fluids or different types of uh, output are get, got at different levels, starting from petrol, then diesel, then kerosene, that uh, say petroleum uh, jelly, which we apply for lips and skin and all. Then few more things will be obtained. And finally, the one which is not or the least useful is the bitumen or the tar which we put on the roads and something very similar is happening in our body also just like there is uh, crude oil which is the main source and for us the main source is the food and drink that we eat okay so that first fruit uh, food and drink that we consume goes into stomach and spleen, which is the earth related material. So these two organs function and the first level of purification happens. So where the pure and impure are segregated at the first level, then okay, we will take this path. Okay, the as we go further, the, we will take the impure path and then we will take the pure, pure path. So the food comes into spleen and stomach. That spleen and stomach divides the first level of, makes the first level of pure impure. And the impure is sent to small intestine. Once again, the small intestine further subdivides it into pure and impure and the impure is sent to the large intestine. Once again, the large intestine subdivides it into pure and impure. The pure is the water which it gets reabsorbed into the body and the impure is the feces, the stools which we pass out. Okay. So this is the process of how the impure gets further purified and further purified and further purified. So body is a very efficient machine. It doesn't allow anything to go waste. Whatever little bit is there, it will try to extract it from the food. Like if you have seen uh, uh, any uh, sugarcane juice vendor on the roadsides, so how they do, they first put the sugar cane, extract the juices and then whatever has come out, they once again put it, they extract the second level of juices, they tighten the levers more, okay? it squeezes out. 
then once again they take it and put it the third time so they extract the maximum juice out of it and when the third or fourth time when they do it only the fiber will be left out no more juices is left okay same thing is happening first the spleen and stomach squeezes it out then small intestine squeezes it out then large intestine once again squeezes it out and by this time okay, the feces is uh, void of maximum amount of, amount of nutrition so the maximum amount of nutrition is taken out from the food and rest is discarded in the form of feces okay now what about the pure part the first level of pure this is the most pure form of uh, what do what can we say the cream of whatever was extracted the best part so now that best part it is sent to lungs okay. we have learned this right stomach sends the energy direction of stomach is downwards all these downward movement take is taken care by the stomach now the upward movement is taken care by the spleen so the purest form is sent to the lungs now from lungs it is split into two so if you notice here when it is split there is no pure and impure kind of thing okay so it is just because the purest part has come to the lungs and lungs it splits into two some part it sends to the skin and muscle okay it nourishes the skin okay, what we have learned as the defensive key so it sends the uh, nutrition under the skin where it moistens the skin and also it gives a protective shield around the body under the skin so where it can defend against the pathogens or external invasions or external changes in or fluctuations in the temperature etc if there is if you are in ac and you suddenly step out to a very hot temperature which is outside so there is a sudden fluctuation in the temperature but this aura kind of thing which the lungs has created that is the defensive key will work to stabilize it so that the body doesn't get exposed to uh, the sudden fluctuations of the temperature or when somebody has a strong that protective key somebody sneezes next to that person that pathogens will not be able to enter into the strong immune system person body okay so we can call it with different name defensive key or immune system etc so that is the one which gives the strength okay which defends the body from the external invasions so one part goes to the skin and muscles and the other part goes to the kidney okay it descends from lungs to kidney so then see if you see here once again the kidney will have the kidney essence so the kidney essence is the kind of purest form of yin that we have right so it is the most fundamental basis on which the body is getting generated so something which is so important should should get the most purest form of raw material so that raw material is sent to kidney through lungs okay now the kidney does its own processing and then some part of it it sends it back to the lungs okay as a steam okay so the kidney sends some part of what it received from lungs back to the lungs to moisten the lungs 
in the vapor form okay and the remaining is sent to the urinary bladder okay. so now we will come here to the so we were discussing about the kidney so here once again we can see that interrelationship between the lungs and the kidney see we have learned that for our breathing okay, both lungs and kidney are essential as per tcm the inhalation is controlled by so we were discussing about the breathing process in breathing in tcm we understand that the inhalation is controlled by kidney and the exhalation is controlled by lungs so for the breathing both lungs and kidney are involved so we can see that relationship here okay. lungs sends the energy to the kidney and the kidney also sends it back to the lungs okay now whatever i have written here the steam we will try to understand it it little later okay so for now we just ignore it so what after the processing done by the kidney whatever is remaining it is sent to the urinary bladder now we'll come back to the small intestine we took care of what was the impure part now let us take care of the pure part so whatever is the pure content of the small intestine that pure content is sent to urinary bladder so there is a connection between small intestine and urinary bladder and what the urinary bladder is doing is within that it is taking the pure part and impure part so the urinary bladder once again converts it into pure and impure so the pure part it once again sends it to the skin and muscles urinary bladder sends the pure part to the skin and muscle and the final impure part okay. one which it came from the small intestine and the one which came from its kidney so it, it it extracts the pure and whatever is the final impure part it goes out as urine okay so and the pure part some of it is expelled as sweat and some of it is utilized to nourish the skin and muscles so what is that uh, is the process vasudev sir hello what is the fluid i wanted to know uh, being sent by lungs to kidney kidney back to lungs and kidney to urinary bag what is the fluid it is okay we will not be able to give the names as such as the one that we you uh, know come to know in the western sciences fluid uh -huh. is anything which is moist okay within mm. the body so many fluids are moving around say it is in the liquid form just say milk tears mucus okay, sweat mm. urine all of those things you are uh, csf and uh, you are a fluid which nourishes the joints all of those fluids put together is called as fluids mm -hmm. so we are not going mm -hmm. to separate it into mm -hmm. this is this and this is this except in some cases where we can the final excretory part which is like the feces urine and sweat make sense uh, at the at the end point yes only at the end point we can we can give a proper name the internally there is too much going on for mm -hmm. us to segregate mm -hmm. it okay mm -hmm. it is too complex to be segregating into uh, minute things okay mm -hmm. okay thank you welcome okay so this is the way that the body fluids are manifested in human body as per tcm say the blood is also body fluids here what is the main difference between the process flow of the blood creation and the process flow of the body fluid creation 
see this is the blood flow creation blood creation flow so we are mainly talking about like up to this part pretty much it is the same right then the kidney essence and original key it infuses itself and that creates the creation of the blood but when it comes to body fluids that essence and original key is not part of it so if you take that out so this part so here heart is not coming into picture finally what happens i gave you the example of the tea say so i if you put all the raw material and serve it is not called as tea so it has to be heated right so in the blood there is heart yang which comes into play so the heart when it comes out of the heart it gets boiled like or that heat is is processing that fluid and finally it becomes blood the output of the heart okay so it is just one fluid which we call it as blood but when it comes to body fluids there are so many types of body fluids blood is just one so i gave you few examples your menstrual fluids reproductive fluids all of those come under body fluids so there are too many kinds of body fluids so it has this particular flow okay so we will try to go into some more explanation of this so this three burner part okay the mist the upper burner is the mist the middle bur burner is maceration chamber and the lower burner is drainage ditch we had discussed this in one of the previous class so it is as if uh, whatever the upper warmer or the upper burner it is it is represented as mist okay? and it is because of the lungs i gave you an example of a deodorant spray kind of thing no when the air is pressurized when it comes out it comes out as a mist similarly that pressure is getting created through lungs because of the constant breathing and in the middle warmer it is maceration chamber it is where the food is getting rotten and ripened due to the stomach and spleen process okay so it goes through the uh, hcl which is there in the stomach it gets macerated and the lower burner is like all the excretory part okay large intestine ub all the impure part the pure part is going upwards and all the impure part is step by step going coming downwards and it gets accumulated in the lower burner okay in the lower burner in large intestine feces is getting accumulated and in the urinary bladder urine is getting accumulated so the body is throwing out the final impure part so that is why it is called the lower burner is the drainage ditch okay so we'll go a little bit deeper into each of this aspect so body fluids what is the source of body fluids for all, all the source the source for all body fluids is by and large to maximum extent it is the food and drinks that we consume okay the body fluids are created using multi level purification system which i talked about and the first level of transformation and separation is done by spleen the first segregation the uh, the uh, maceration is done by the stomach and the segregation and transformation of that juices is done by spleen so some clean fluids then go up from spleen to lungs from where which spreads some of them to the skin and some of them are sent down to the kidney and some dirty fluids that is the impure fluids is sent to small intestine so here once again i am trying to uh, emphasize the purest of the pure 
goes to the lungs and the kidneys okay and somewhat uh, slightly dirty stuff or impure stuff comes into small intestine where they are separated again into pure and impure the pure fluids fluids go to urinary bladder and the impure fluids go to large intestine so it is important to understand that there is a connection between small intestine and urinary bladder and small intestine and large intestine this part all of us know small intestine to large intestine is like a same continuation of the pipe but there is a connection between small intestine and urinary bladder because whatever is the pure goes from urinary uh, from small intestine to urinary bladder so in large intestine some water is reabsorbed okay, we all know in our uh, uh, previous classes we have learnt about this large intestine once again absorbs the water that is why it is associated with the dryness energy because it dries the stools by absorbing the reabsorbing the water and whatever is the final impure part is sent along with the feces okay the urinary bladder further transform whatever the pure part which came to the urinary bladder the urinary bladder further transforms and separates the fluid fluids it receives into pure and impure okay the pure fluids flow upwards and go to the exterior of the body where they form sweat the pure fluids the impure fluids flow downwards and are transformed into urine okay urinary bladder affects its transformation and separation by the power of qi okay. so here is an important aspect to understand say stuff has come into the urinary bladder through small intestine and the kidney now this has to once again transform and segregate for any transformation we know which is the element which transforms out of all the five elements fire fire is the one which transforms now it requires fire urinary bladder requires fire where will it require get the fire from actually urinary bladder is a water element coldness energy that coldness energy requires hotness or the heat to do its segregation and transformation where will that heat come into urinary bladder from sa from sa the fluids is coming in a way you are right from kidney to yeah. some extent but not fully from kidney yeah. middle part yeah. warmer triple warmer triple warmer okay so it is from getting, kidney yeah, first yes exactly so it is receiving that heat or warmth from the kidney and that kidney has <coughs> both kidney, kidney in and kidney yang and kidney also kidney also essence cold. pardon kidney is also cold element no yeah 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 but along with that kidney is the mother of all the yin and yang oh, okay that was... right so right. The, the kidney yang is the mother of all yang and kidney yin is the mother of all yin okay so that yang the fire element which is there in the kidney supports the urinary bladder to perform this final transformation okay separation of the urine and the pure the the sweat part okay. the final both of them are kind of impure even the sweat is impure and the urine is impure but within that there is some amount of pureness and which is sent to the body back again which is excreted as sweat okay so 
all the diagnosis lot of diagnosis and treatment is hidden within this flow chart okay if you start slowly observing you will be able to make out okay say for example if somebody is urine is clear okay how should the urine be it should be light yellow pale yellow light yellow pale yellow right but somebody's urine is clear it means that too much of water is going out right so what is happening what is it, what does it mean it means that whatever the pure part is supposed to go back into the body okay that is not happening even that liquid so even that part is getting is going out in the form of urine so the urinary bladder is not able to transform the final fluids which is coming here so what should be the treatment a kidney strengthening kidney yang kidney yang yes. increase kidney yang yes exactly increase the kidney yang so when you see the uh, patterns okay you will see that uh, you know excess of urination and clear urination comes under kidney yang so now you should be able to think why that symptom has come into that pattern right and the explanation of that is over here because the urinary bladder is not getting enough warmth to do its transformation of segregation of urine and sweat and so all of that is going out is as urine right okay so to proceed further so urinary bladder affects this transformation and separation by the power of ki with it with it receives from kidney yang whatever ki it is receiving from the kidney yang that is the one which is doing this transformation and separation this function of bladder is called function of ki transformation it is called whatever that separation it is doing that function is called function of ki transformation so in the yellow emperor under the simple questions chapter 21 it says fluids enter the stomach and they are separated fluid enters the stomach and they are separated a pure part flows upwards from the spleen to the lungs which direct them to the water passage and then downwards to the bladder okay. so it is talking about this flow food enters the stomach and the pure part goes into the lungs from there it descends into the water passage into kidney then it goes into the urinary bladder the process of formation of body fluids is the result of intricate series of purification process each stage further separating the fluids into pure and impure part we have understood this for this reason the chinese talk of pure within the impure part and the impure within the pure part what does it mean okay. so when we take the first level of purification is done the impure is remaining and within that still there is pure within that impure there is pure and whatever we take whatever we take to the next level as pure there is still impure part in within that okay and it requires multi level purification the pure fluid needs to be transported upwards and the impure fluids downwards okay this correct movement of the pure and the impure fluids depends on the correct ascending descending and entering exiting of ki and is essential to their proper transformation if all the segregation transformation transportation is supposed to happen to the fluids the energies within the organs of rising and descending the entering and exiting all of that should be in the right proportion because the food is moving from up to downwards and whatever the pure is separated it is moving from down to up and at the same time it is spreading to the skin it is moving in all the directions in that way for all of that to happen properly 
the energies has to be right within the body so we were talking when it comes to body fluids the main organs contributing towards transformation transportation and excretion of body fluids are lungs spleen and kidney these are the three main organs which deal with body fluids which were the three main organs when it comes to blood heart lungs heart, heart lungs spleen, spleen. lung and heart heart lungs and spleen kidney and lungs okay. spleen, lungs heart spleen lungs heart four sir even kidney also liver liver also spleen liver and heart heart spleen liver so these are the three main organs which are related to the blood see other organs are also there they also do the work but the most three important organs is heart spleen and liver when it comes to blood okay when it comes to bo body fluids it is lungs spleen and kidneys the pure fluids flow upwards to the lungs which distributes some to the space under the skin and some downwards to the kidney see this statement how do we understand like how do how do we use it for diagnosis for example anybody wants to share how we can use this for diagnosis that statement for people having dry skin mm -hmm. so if they have some problem with the lung mm -hmm. um in deficiency then that will reflect in the skin as a dry skin as schema sort of okay. very good very good very nice so can i put in a little word here yes madam please this so this pure fluids which is under the skin and between the muscles and skin is the way key way chi that is the defensive chi and yes. that uh, is some of it is stored there and the rest is sent to the kidneys for its functioning cell yes not sure but this is what we were taught yeah this is what we also discussed i don't know if you were little late so we discuss this see the pure part goes to the lungs and from lungs some of it goes to the skins and muscles in the form of defensive key and some goes to the kidney and kidney sends some of it back to the lungs to moisten the lungs yes yes beautiful perfect okay. okay so i was about to i was thinking also about the same thing which is say somebody is having a dry skin their skin is dry their hair is dry their nails are all dry okay what should come to your mind the fluids is less okay. visibly it is less on the skin so who controls that fluid it is the lungs lungs and that dry. lungs uh, excuse me all these dry things are symptoms of lung key deficiency right no lungs yin deficiency yin is fluids yeah. right so yeah. the fluids when it is less it shows up in that way mm. okay makes sense yeah so this is how we will use all these theoretical statements for our diagnosis okay for this reason the lungs are called the upper source of water okay. for the upper part of the body what is the source of water it is the lungs and it is also like clouds okay the clouds drizzle water okay onto the earth right similarly lungs are like clouds which drizzle water onto the body the upper source of water the urinary bladder function of key transformation is controlled by kidney yang we discussed this hence the kidneys are called the lower source of water okay, the upper source of water is lungs and the lower source of water the requirements of water in the lower source or the lower part of the body is taken care by kidney that is why 
the kidney is called the lower source of water excuse me sir yes. so also applies to large intestine no? so kidney yang will take care of large intestines absorption of water too right yes yes so the kidney yang does multiple things say this energy of small intestine to segregate the pure and impure that energy is also provided by kidney yang so if somebody see that once again transformation and uh, separation requires heat for small whatever work that urinary bladder is doing that is transformation and uh, separation heat is required similarly for small intestine also heat is required the nearest even though it is its paired organ is the heart but because it is in the vicinity of the kidney kidney gives that warmth to the small intestine and kidney gives the warmth to the urinary bladder so and if you see those who have kidney yang deficiency that warmth is less their ability to absorb will also be low that warmth is less to the small intestine and also they will have this more water like urination so it will not be yellow colored so this are the way that we can understand that okay the kidney is having less warmth in it make sense yes yes great okay and also another part it is slightly different probably somewhere in future we will get that but because it is very e close to re closely related which is not part of this chart i will explain this see lungs and large intestine are paired organs and lungs is like a cloud it is giving water downwards and if somebody is having difficulty in or like constipation hard stool out of many possibilities one of the possibility could be that the lungs is not sending enough moisture to the large intestine from top it is not giving enough moisture to its paired organ so if somebody seen uh, is having lot of dry skin and the person is seems to be deficient of yin and also is having hard stools or difficulty in defecation in the form of constipation etc then what should come to your mind is the fluids are less the lubricating effect is less in the body so we should treat or increase the fluids in the body that can be increased one way of increasing it is through lungs yin okay and there are other ways by increasing the kidney yin also that lubrication will increase okay so this is out of this chapter but because we are in this uh, flow chart i am explaining this any other questions yes. uh does uh, sorry please go ahead uh, go ahead revathi ji i already asked one question thank you now does the liver and heart do nothing regarding the body fluids it see there is nothing like not, no organ does every organ does something but predominantly these are the organs say liver and heart are dealing with the blood blood okay so the other organs are dealing with the body fluids mm. and there is no channel for these body fluids right how do they move so there are there would be some kind of connections or either it could be the movement through uh, diffusion of water say uh -huh. if you if you put water and soak some uh, say moong dal or something seeds so it absorbs the water there is no water pathways but through diffusion it absorbs there is movement of water happening so in all different forms okay, if uh, 
for those who are uh, no are not able to get this uh, say if the water rain falls on your house so there is dedicated um, drainage pipes where the rain water goes out but there is also some seepage happening some in some people's house the water starts seeping to interiors so it doesn't mean that the water only moves through the drainage pipes mm. so there is different forms of movement for the water and the same for other like elements also but because we are talking about body fluids that is the way okay uh, one last question mm -hmm. this lymphatic system does it come under body fluid yes yes okay thank you welcome hi kishai i have one question yes. uh, do this uh, oily skin and highly oily some people have um, oily scalp and oily face and mm -hmm. uh, um, um, much of uh, um but like a, um, more than the normal people mm -hmm. so do you have any sort of explanation for that see what is oil in oh, in in okay and it is kind of form of humidity yeah right? yeah it is, so it is a, a thick humid is like sticky and uh, high vis uh, low viscosity kind of thing so it is there is somewhere it, uh, humidity there is imbalance dampness in the body which is coming out as that oil stuff so which needs to be corrected gives an Thank gives you. an answer yeah 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 it makes sense mm -hmm. okay any other questions yes, sir can it be treated as a opposite of dry skin which one oily skin in a way you can say yes because there is low fluids in this and more fluids in that but the element is different right we look into the humidity part over there yeah okay yes okay. you can if we say yin is less in dry skin yin is more in oily skin that also we can do that okay. prakash sir you Thank ask you. some question please ask uh, sir uh, where is tears stored because um, as per uh, tcm the outer organ of uh, expressing organ of uh, liver is eyes mm -hmm. so if tears is storing in liver or is there a separate um, chamber or something to store the tears in the eyes see it is uh, okay i'll try to see somebody gets sorrowful okay uh, they are sad and they weep a lot okay tears come out so does it mean say once in a year they wept okay so does it mean that for one year that much amount of tears was stored somewhere and only when they wept it came out and until that time it was just there is that the philosophy that we are looking or something else no the, there is some amount of tears stored but if there is a requirement body creates it okay because lot of fluids are flowing throughout the body right okay. so it transforms and creates into tears and uses it if required else some is to, uh, kept for the moistening like every time we blink the eyes Ice. it needs to be cleared moisture needs to be there right it is there but it is utilized for other purposes also okay mm. is it from lungs that the tears are more formed because in sorrow or sadness it is the lung which is more involved than any other so See. it is the moisture from lungs that is been transferred as tears is it like uh, any logic could be could be i am not very clear on this we can uh, no once if i get some more clear answer i will inform okay <laughs> okay okay uh, well uh, i'd like to say something anatomically anatomic research all of you who been asking where tears are stored uh, is very true when you say that the liver you know the liver opens in the eyes so in the eyes you have got what is called a tear duct apparatus that apparatus is responsible for secreting these tears at a particular time 
of course, under the influence of sorrow or the emotional effects, again, through the autonomic nervous system. So this is something that is, that is a systematic approach to production of tears. There is no such thing that is formed and stored. It is automatically, it has got the capacity to respond to emotion and put out tears. There is no, I, I don't think there is a, a requirement for actually storage. So this whole apparatus that includes also, you know, your tear, your tear ducts, and you've got some glands around the eye where, which are producing oily substances to keep the eyelashes, you know, um, lubricated. So all these things are happening in the apparatus of the eye. So I guess the liver has a, a strong uh, connection with these, these, this apparatus, is what I understand. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, skin uh, itching, do dryness, sir? Yes, yes. It depends, like why the itching is happening. But by and large, yes, it is because of the dryness. The lack of yin is making the skin itching. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, madam. Sir, tell me again. Right time, the boy is dry up, but then it is dry up. Lips to tongue cell dry up. It is the reason of this. See, the question is: some people in the night. It, uh, uh, dryness in the, uh, uh, dryness dryness in the, the mouth and the tongue uh, all uh, it becomes yes, dry. Yes, what yes, could be yes, the yes. reason? Yes. It is because once again dryness is lack of yin. Lack of yin. Okay. So somewhere the yin is less in the body and that is causing okay. the dryness. Okay. Sir, for some kids, uh, the tear won't stop. There will be continuous flow of water from the eyes. Mm -hmm. What may be the reason for that? Okay, so it could be. See what is happening. Shashat. Excess. Okay. I, I will. I will ask uh, um, Sushila, Madam, to explain in terms of an anatomy, physiology. But in terms of TCM, see what is happening is what is tears. It is in. Okay. So in is bodies sending out in outside. It means that there is too much of in inside. That is why it is trying to throw out in one form or the other. Right. It means that there is excess yin or deficiency of yang. That is why there is too much of tears flowing out. I will request uh, Sushila Madam to give her views on this. Yeah, you know, the tear drug apparatus I was talking about, there is a duct. In small children, for a few months, the duct gets canalized much later. There's a channel. The channel is blocked. So even in adults, when the channel gets blocked, you'll find that the tears in your eye, tears are meant mainly for lubrication of the eye, you know, the external eye, apart from its emotional uh, connections. But when it flows down, there is a obstruction to the duct. And that is why they tell the parents, if the baby is having more tears in the eyes, to massage, to massage that area, you know, at the inner canthus of the eye, to massage that area. If you massage that area, it is believed that it facilitates the canalization and flow of the, of the urine. Sometimes it happens in the nose, but which time, uh, I mean, we have procedures for recanalizing the tear duct. So that is what they say is the tear duct apparatus. That's the reason why you have uh, excess of tears forming in the eye, which you can visibly see. Normally, it continuously flows. You'll find that people, when they cry, you know, you have tears. Most if you sniff, why do you sniff when you when you cry because most of it gets part of it comes out onto the face and part of it gets absorbed into the duct or other pulled out through the duct and comes into the nose. So this is the reason for the tears coming out through the nose and the obvious, uh, you don't normally see it because it's well spread, but there is a continuous process of draining the tears back into the nasal duct and into your throat and stomach and out whenever. Okay. If you understood what is the tear duct apparatus, I think. Yes, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Mangalam, madam. Yes. Uh, um, as far as uh, that uh, itching and all, uh, the reason it is being said in TCM is dryness. Mm -hmm. But for some persons, uh, if they itch now, after itching, some, some water is uh, getting oozed out. Mm -hmm. This is also due to dryness or uh, some other... Uh, Am See. I not understanding it properly? See, it is uh, body. Humidity. Is, body is trying to give that fluid. 
see it it depends from patient to patient you are telling if somebody scratches their skin the liquids come yeah, out yeah yeah right? yeah yeah so that uh. we will have to see either because it is one is itching is mainly because of dryness and say when hmm. there is when you you stimulate the body so body will hmm. try to give that yin from somewhere right dryness oh. is causing that uh, itching right and the body has to fix hmm. it so it will send the fluids hmm. so this is how we can understand no it is coming out how come it will send so a part of it is coming or the some portion would be going to the right, exact position where it is required isn't it that's yes. what you are trying to yes where okay. it is required it send body sends the fluids over there see whenever there is a okay. cut there is a wound mm. body sends more mm. energy there for it to heal mm. right mm. so similarly there is some kind of external stimulation which is happening and body responds yeah. to that dryness by sending extra fluids over there okay okay thank you so much sir yeah. okay any other question sir may sir may i ask I... yes everybody can ask just in sir i am bindu here yes madam uh, sir uh, we are talking about in in mm. deficiency that is the dryness and all mm. those things is related to in mm mm-hmm. here uh, the in will be only the body fluids or it can be blood also blood is also in yes blood is also in it can blood. be any deficiency it is yes. not that it should be some body fluid deficiency it can be blood deficiency also we yes. get this dry skin and all yes 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 exactly see okay. blood body fluids and essence all these three are in okay okay yeah so whenever mm-hmm. there is a deficiency in any of these things we can see dryness okay. and that is why when we treat the protocols some are specific to blood and some are specific as yin okay there is no lung blood deficiency okay there is lung yin deficiency when we treat yin the entire yin part is taken care okay Okay, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, those who are uh, no, it, it is all these are new words and confusing. Just relax. We will take this up little later. Okay. Yeah, I also wanted to ask something. Yes, please. Yeah, can this dryness be because of excess fire in the body? Yes, excess fire is there because see there are two types, right? I'll in one of the class we discussed like last to last class. there are two types of fire, increase of fire one is because the actual flame is going up or second is because the fluids is less in the body that also gives rise to heat so because the fluids is less to absorb that heat the heat may happen so in both the cases that heat can happen the itching excess of heat reduces the fluids and then that causes itching that could be the way did you get oh, your yes, answer madam you. yes sir absolutely thank you okay is it that empty heat sir or yes i i gave the the example which i gave was for full mm-hmm. heat and empty heat both uh, in the fungal instruction uh-huh. uh dryness is more or what is that see in fungal, fungal. infection Moisture. the blood the blood is less in that area mm. see when the blood is flowing mm. there it has lot of defensive key to take care of it when the blood flow is less then all these uh, you know fungal growth and all those things happen yes. wpc will tell us this warriors won't be there to fight mm. against then what to do sir so we have to increase the blood flow so we will have to see why blood flow is less either because the blood itself is get creating less less blood is getting created then we will have to look into spleen etc or the blood is getting created but it is not getting distributed properly then we will have to look into heart right so the heart doesn't oh. have enough energy to distribute it everywhere so then we will have to see depending on the case we will have to treat it make sense sir ah uh, yes mm-hmm. 
Sir, here I have a question. Yes. We have all these separate protocols, no? Uh, mm -hmm. Like kidney indeficiency, mm -hmm. uh, liver indeficiency, liver blood deficiency, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. heart blood deficiency. So mm -hmm. if uh, blood comes under in, mm -hmm. why is there a separate blood deficiency? If we just do indeficiency, it will take care of everything, no? Which indeficiency see, will take care? See the see my guess the, is everything. It will just uh, resolve whatever in is less. No, That's, no. In see, my mind, I, I may be wrong. That, that is a simplistic way of thinking, but the the work of blood blood has a very specific function, and the in the fluids have another function, right? So these two requires to be sorted out. based on their um, see when i when we uh, you eat something okay because it is food the same food will not satisfy all the nutritional requirements of your body so you will have to eat different food also right so one day you will eat uh, chapati one day you will eat dal or rice so grains so by doing all of that your entire nutritional requirements is taken care if you just eat one just even though it is food it will not have everything in the required amount okay. so even though both blood and fluids are in just by treating in we may not be able to take care of all of these things and for specific things which is needed for blood we will have to treat blood okay okay chalk and cheese are not same even though both are white <laughs> yes yes right okay next question sir yes jagdish sari yes madam sir in covid situation mm -hmm. in the lung fluids are excess or in, in excess or yang deficiency sir it is Young deficiency, I would say. Okay. We will take this thing up in detail when we take the in young class. Okay. For as of now, because there is young deficiency, the water is not being the lungs is not able to spread out the water, so it is getting collected. Is what I think. Yeah, Krishna Murthy. Okay. Yes, madam. Mm. now you said all the lower fluids kidney is responsible and all the upper the lung is responsible yes kind of okay now yes. uh, the uh, uterus uh, fluids or the when the in pregnancy the amniotic fluid mm -hmm. or uh, uh, whatever the peritoneal fluid mm -hmm. then in the lower extremities the synovial fluid mm -hmm. whatever fluid comes all mm -hmm. that the kidney is in charge and the upper areas the lung is in charge is that the sinus fluids Yes, and yes. To a large extent, we can see that correlation. Say, for example, somebody is having knee pain, okay, mm. and you will see that we treat kidney. Mm. When we see when we treat kidney young deficiency, mm. many of the knee pains get taken care of. So Even here, the, so that simply. yes, in the so the lower part of the uh, fluids. Hmm. is governed by kidney to a large to whatever i have seen similarly how you said about the dry skin mm -hmm. if there is a dry mouth there was stomia uh, normally with diabetes or any other condition medical condition mm -hmm. will uh, lung in uh, help is i tone it up see we will have to see see for example i am i am not very sure on this part say for example if we see stomach in or mm. stomach say so how is that uh, apparatus set up in the body is what food mm. comes and there is one pipe which directly takes it to the stomach right mm. and whatever fumes which are coming out of that stomach mm. is also influencing the uh, the environment in the mouth okay mm. so if the in is less in the stomach it is very dry then that also can create the dryness in the mouth because the opening of the stomach is mouth mouth 
yeah. right and also because lungs is there very close to it okay the fluids in the lungs may also in influence uh the dryness so mm. it cannot be told mm. like for all dryness in the upper part lungs is responsible we cannot say that okay. we'll have to see depending on the case we can look into it mouth get becomes a common area for our uh, windpipe as well as the foot pipe so yes yes exactly exactly so yeah. there is an influence of both okay. just like a, a child in the house mother also mm. has an influence father also has an influence so we cannot just say only one person has an influence we cannot say that and then heart uh, heat in heart or something that also has that an influence that also can dry it up yes yes exactly okay Nice, ma. Thank you. This flow Good chart time. is one. I like this. Yeah. Thank you. So I have oh, to nice. thank the author. G- <laughs> so wherever you got it, you reached it to us, no? So that yes, is nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> Giovanni Masiosi, Masiosia yeah. is the author, and I have taken it from him, and I have added little bit of mine. Great. Mm-hmm. Sir, can I ask a question? Please. Uh, sir, body fluids. You are t- talking about empty heat, full heat, all this coming in, mm-hmm. and we also have a principle of homeostasis in our body. Mm-hmm. Under what will we be categorizing that in TCM, sir? Repeat your question. Uh, you said in the when it is converting into ste- uh, the sweat, uh, the sweat formation or something, mm-hmm. or the body temperature. You said in one place it was empty heat. In one place you said it is full heat. Mm-hmm. but uh, as a part of homeo homeostasis our mm-hmm. body fluids uh, mm-hmm. will be doing this balance to maintain few standard temperatures mm-hmm. so that under what category will be categorizing it as per tcm sir okay your question is the homeostasis falls under full heat or empty heat is that your question yes so, or it will be something different other than empty heat or full heat will it be a different category so, is what i so want to understand everything put together full heat empty heat coldness dryness everything put together creates homeostasis oh okay that will be a balance of all these to everything put together, everything put together yes yes okay okay sir so, thank does you that answer so much, your thanks. question that's what i wanted mm-hmm. yes yes sir that's what i wanted to understand what will that that being our standard body's procedure mm-hmm. how will we categorize it is what i wanted to understand everything, thank you it sir is everything is done by because uh, it will some places it will increase the fluid some pl- places it will increase the uh, temperature some places it will increase the dryness all of these things is done to maintain the homeostasis okay. so we just have okay. another 2 minutes so, next question yes, one ma'am. simple and uh, silly question <laughs> nothing is See. silly no no this part i just want to clarify see the food and drink it goes to stomach okay mm-hmm. but in this column it is written as stomach and spleen yes. it means that whatever that kind goes see, to spleen and I, then I, yeah yeah I, i see there is an important part see when you eat food okay only when it goes to the small intestine crossing the stomach the absorption doesn't happen there it's only in st- small intestine the absorption happens starting from the tongue okay in your uh, bhb classes you would have l- starting from the tongue there is something gets getting absorbed some things abs- get absorbed in the stomach itself some gets mainly it gets absorbed in intestine so so we cannot just say only stomach is the one which is doing the spleen has an i- influence in the entire tract starting from the tongue so uh, say alcohol and, and all gets uh, absorbed in starting from tongue so here spleen also plays a role in the absorption does it make sense And then it doesn't mean that from uh, stomach it goes to the spleen or the spleen is helping the stomach for further uh, transport okay Im- imagine st- the entire food is flowing like this okay i'm okay, just i'll i just have less than a minute okay imagine the food is flowing here like this and the spleen is over here so it 
influences the entire flow okay Fine. so i can take this up in any other class or uh, in uh, the group so thank you all for joining the class have a good night good afternoon good morning depending on your time zones